always open. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and we have a very special episode today. <laughs> uh, well, let's start off by introducing all of our guests, starting with... It's me. I'm Hannah McCarthy. I panicked. I don't Quietly. know why. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's Hannah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I panicked. It's Hannah. Hi. My name's GB. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's already happening. Hi. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's me. It's your friendly neighborhood, Mariel. I'm here. I'm back. We're back. We're back. Um, we have a very special guest, if you didn't notice when we did the intros. We got GB right here with Whoa. us. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Very much known in the ASMR community. You want to tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you do in case people don't know what ASMR is and all that jazz? Yeah, I am a full-time ASMR YouTuber. Or ASM artist. ASM artist. Is that, is that right. the proper term? It like just flows off the tongue. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I can't seriously call myself that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you that. You don't have to call yourself that. Mm, okay. And you have like yeah. one of the most popular ASMR channels. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome It though. really just... I started, It's. I think it's like three years, like today. Oh, oh my wow. gosh, yeah. happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like we have to do everything. Like I know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally never quiet unless I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> the juxtaposition of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so happy to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank we you heard so that much you, for you knew Always Open and mm -hmm. checked it out every now and then. So. Mm -hmm. And you're in town filming some other fun stuff mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. And so oh. we said, let's do it. Yeah, I'm glad I could sneak in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't we are always glad we could sneak in here. And Hannah, welcome back. Hello, welcome. Always. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Nervous as ever. <laughs> always. Hannah also does ASMR. Does ASMR? Oh. I took a video like, of her once tapping on a uh, very the giant expired ostrich egg. Ostrich egg that we it's have. It's very expired. I'm professional now. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah I've been done. crowned. This is, I can, I, no, I'm not at all. But I did love it because it was like, it is, how big would you say that it's ostrich a, egg it's is? A, it's like it's that huge. Big. It's, it's an ostrich egg. It's a real one? It's like a Yeah, real one. It was just sitting in your office for a while. Well, it's still there. Yeah. We've had it for oh, like still about there. a year now. It's definitely, I mean, it's I have 100% to assume. Right. Oh, it hasn't hatched. No, it no. hasn't hatched. I tried to no. sit on it, see if mm. that'll work, but no. No, no baby. No. No. But it sounded <laughs> great. It <laughs> sounded yeah. really nice when you tapped it. Yeah, she yeah. was just sitting there mm -hmm. in like front of really my desk. It's like a really thick eggshell. Yep, mm -hmm. and she was just like talking to me, and then she goes, tap, 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 tap. <laughs> it just was, it sounded great. <laughs> I did, and I was like, hey, it's tomorrow. Yeah, and I think I, record, I recorded it. You did. I, like, I have to it. say. Yeah, I had to so make I. sure she knew what I was doing. Right, right. She wasn't necessarily, you know, she had to know. Well, mm. Let's get into the show by okay. doing our shout out. Oh, man. Um, Texas made us these right before the show. They're little baby margaritas. Baby margaritas. Tiny, tiny. From a baby Texas. So cheers. Cheers. Stevie wanted something with tequila, Thank so you. we yeah. obliged. Well, yes. Texas, Texas has to say about me. I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, that was perfect. I'm still not drinking. Oh, there it is. So that was 100% sweet and sour mix. How does so. that taste? I guess it's just, well, it's just sweet just and sour. <laughs> As the name would yes. suggest. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, well, we're going to get things started uh, with a little game we call Speed Dating. Mm. This is a, a great chance for us to get to know you better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hannah, Hannah loves this game. Oh, I don't yeah. think favorite. we have any crazy surprises for you. Yep. You, <laughs> you said that last time. I haven't looked at the question. You yet. sure said that last time. We'll have you go first. Oh. Fun. So, okay. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Ish. Miss Hannah, mm -hmm. have you ever formed an opinion about a stranger in a grocery store based primarily on the items he or she is buying? Yeah. Does the idea of flipping a coin to make an important life decision appeal to you? No. What is your opinion of people who speak baby talk to their pets? Uh, it's fine. How often do you do things out of spite? Oh, more than I should. <laughs> do superficial people who place a high emphasis on physical appearance annoy you? Yes. If all the professional sport leagues in the world ceased to exist, would you be upset? Mm, no. <laughs> the puppy bowl. No more puppy bowl. That's no, true. Those people. professional pup leagues. Is that leagues. professional? Do they leagues. get paid? I think I so. They're getting paid. They better get paid. I want that to continue. Mm. Do you um, ever talk baby talk to your cats? I, that's why I panicked. I was like, I certainly do. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that I, I, I think I panicked on that question because I was thinking about babies versus pets. Because I know people say, I don't know what if it's true or not, but they say you should talk to babies like people. So that they grow up. So like that they not develop. Like babies. Yeah, not like babies. Don't use baby talk on babies. I mean, How are listen. you, baby? Yes. Hello, baby. But How that's are you so feeling? hard, man. It is oh, really they're hard. Cute. Can you see that their face? baby. And I don't know. Again, I'm not a, I don't know the science behind it, so I'm sure there would be people who will tell me what it is. Um, Good and, morning, Benjamin. <laughs> Did you make doo-doo in your pants? <laughs> All right. I think it's that it theoretically helps them develop language skills right, yeah. more it's quickly it's, but it's though. also fun to like talk to them that way and so yeah, yeah cat pet, you know cats don't care cats don't need to develop language <laughs> I'm not trying to help skills. them learn how to talk so yeah. it's fine 
They're I clever. heard they respond well to like higher pitched they voices. They do. Oh, well, that's, yeah. someone was also saying, because so, uh, God, it always comes back to my cats every time I'm here. <laughs> um, so okay. my foster cats, I um, they come with names. Like the shelter yeah. g gives them names, and I, I try very hard not to rename them because I will get attached to them. Yeah. Um, but we, we've talked about the fact it really doesn't matter because they aren't responding to their name. They're responding to the pitch. It's like yeah. you could be like, you know, chicken wing and they'd be like <laughs> they'd probably look at you if you did it in the right pitch right yeah i mean someone should name their cat chicken wing now but that's a great name i kind of um, want to yeah I but i think it, you're exactly right i think it has to do more with the pitch it gets their yeah. attention i think um, it's impossible for me to see a dog and not be like hey buddy yeah oh you're so cute they get so happy when they you do, do. Yeah. yeah they're like are you talking to me you're someone rewarded like that. Yeah. i react the same way yeah. Yeah. why deny them that happiness yeah you know? i'm gonna start talking to you that way Mary. i'd love it i don't marry you i don't like it <laughs> what a quick 180 that was. <laughs> Thought I would. Not into it. Not into it. All right, Miss GB, are you oh. ready? Yes. <laughs> All right. And go. Are you a good liar? No. <laughs> Is it easier for you to apologize when you know you have made a mistake? Is it easier? If you know you. Is it easy oh. to apologize? Uh, yes, yes. Do you think most people your age would guess what kinds of music you listen to or don't listen to just by looking at you? No. Mm, intriguing. Yeah. Would you rather have a complete mastery of one skill or be good at many? Good at many. Do you drink milk and juice straight out of the carton and then put it back in the fridge? <laughs> yes, because it's mine. Hey! <laughs> exactly, as you should. As you should. You've earned that. You've earned that right. I, I lived alone for most of my life and I still never did that. Really? Yeah. Waste of glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why, why did you just put in so much work? Yeah. It's like 2 a.m. You're like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I guess if it's late. Orange juice was always, I can't buy it anymore. Because I drank it too fast. Oh. <laughs> like, what happened? Yeah, well, I got banned. <laughs> I met someone who developed an allergy to orange juice, and so she used to drink it all the time. Whoa. And now she's like, I can't have it anymore. That's scary. Developing an allergy, like, all of a sudden, you can just... I would yeah. cry if I developed yeah. an allergy to anything I liked. Oh, I'm I'm 100% certain I have, like, a weird food allergy that affects me not in the way that food allergies do. Like, I get, like, seasonal allergies. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's either, like, eggs, potatoes, or really? some kind of, um, like, flour. The nightshades. And so I just... <laughs> That's illegal. You're Mexican. <laughs> that's illegal. She's calling <laughs> the cops. Half, that's half of your, that's of your my diet. favorite foods. <laughs> that's all my favorite foods. And so I just eat them, and I suffer, and I sneeze a lot, and then I get over it. Hmm. Are you saying, like, seasonally you get those? No, 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 no. Okay. I was like, like, reaction, reaction, like in the spring, allergy. you can't right. eat yeah. potatoes. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, what I mean by that is that, like, most food allergies, they, they affect your stomach in mm. a way, right? Like, oh, gluten intolerance. They manifest, okay, like, yeah. seasonal allergies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it. I'll, like, get super sneezy and, like, oh. watery eyes after eating, like, pancakes. I was really That's intrigued the by the I idea that at certain times of year, Meryl yeah. yeah. couldn't <laughs> eat certain foods. Spring. Yeah. No Spring potatoes. is sprung. Yeah. I need a potato. <laughs> no winter eggs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of music do you like? Mm. Well, I listen to everything. So I'm like no. super into like anime and like okay. Broadway. So I'll be listening to like Hamilton or like some like Have anime opening four times. Oh shit! <laughs> well, yeah, you're in. But yeah. I just started. Like okay. I, I jump on fandoms really late. Yeah, you've seen Hamilton. I've once. seen it twice. Twice. I just saw it like two days ago. I Dude, not two days ago. Two and days it was ago. really good, right? It was amazing. Yeah. It was even more amazing the second time around. I got to see it with my mom. Uh, the first time around was a disaster, but um, I loved it still. Did you go in blind? The first time I saw it, I had I you purposefully didn't. didn't. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I, I knew all the music and everything. Uh, I went to see it in Chicago and um, bought my tickets and well in advance. And when I went, I realized that the day that I bought the tickets, that I was going to see the show, uh, was the wrong date. Oh. So I'd flown to Chicago, planned no. a whole trip around the wrong date. Mm -hmm. And so instead of going home, I bought tickets that day for like a thousand bucks. I know. So bad. For oh, you. yo, you, you, you laughed. Sometimes <laughs> you laughed they'll be really cheap day of. Yeah, no, they no, were. No, but I was able to time. like sell the other ones. Okay. It worked out. It okay. worked out. Yeah. But it was amazing. I, I just remember amazing. like seeing that and you telling me that, and I just went, "You're a fucking idiot." Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yep. yep, I just fucked up real bad. Oh, I guess like sometimes if you have like an idea in your head and you're just like, yeah, I'm convinced that this is yeah. the plan and, yeah. and the dates yeah. for everything, and you just end up going. And well, yeah. the thing was, I had bought tickets. It, it was it was a chain of three events. Or like, I bought the tickets after the election, the 2016 election, because I was like, we're all gonna die. Money's not real. What does it matter? So I bought Let's tickets. Go see Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, I bought tickets yeah. to see Let's it in see. Chicago, yeah. and then tickets to see it in New York. And mm. so all of those dates just like swam around in my head mm -hmm. and I just like picked them at random and I was like, this is when I'm going to Chicago, this uh -huh. is when I go. And yeah. uh, that's what happened. So anyway, I've seen it. The second <laughs> time was uh, less chaotic. Mm -hmm. So with my mom like a week ago, it was beautiful. Oh, wow. Very nice. Here in Austin, didn't have How to go it? anywhere. Great, it was great.
phenomenal. They're here? Yeah, they were here. Mm. You know, I've never mm. seen a musical before. Mm. I've never, ever seen a <laughs> musical? I've never seen a Broadway Whoa. show. I know. Well, I've never that's a, it's a really good, it's a really good one to go to. Yeah. I, uh, for some reason, when I was younger, I got obsessed with Avenue Q. Mm. Are you yeah, familiar okay. with that show? Yeah. No. It's another Broadway show. I got obsessed with it. Like I had the soundtrack, and it's like I was super raunchy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All I would listen to, and I never saw the show, but I knew everyone's like, "Oh, you know, I like you." Could sing along to all of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's great. Highly mm, recommend it. Okay. Um, I'm also all over the place with music yeah. too. Mm -hmm. so I, mean, I, I grew up on like that. My Chemical Romance. Hell, it was yeah. that. Yes. I just went to I was emo that. night. Mm -hmm. Very tiring. Friggin it was tiring. Like, you just like scream the whole time. Well, yes. Um, and I just like I was just tired, man. And it was like a weird like it was emo night L.A. in Austin. Oh my god. Um, and so it was like a guy like also trying to perform and like be a hype man to the music while just like doing karaoke to it basically. Oh, huh. Just so fun. But that a sounds, layered experience, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of layers to that. Yeah, I have a friend who's going. Uh, she's going on a vacation soon, and they were looking at bars to go to, and they found a gay club that does um, drag queen uh, emo music. And I was that's like, God, that sounds fucking phenomenal. That sounds incredible. Like Black Parade, yeah. like. And they, she said that they have a, <laughs> uh, like a power hour of Fall Out Boy only. <laughs> and I was like, I need to go. Oh, well, that sounds anyway, amazing. That sounds, I love that. Either like it will be amazing or just. Terrible. Oh no, the best thing. Best thing. So good. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. All right, Meryl. Let's do you. All right. <laughs> Meryl. Yes. Barbara. Do you consider yourself to be photogenic? <sighs> Say yes. It's true. Sure. Do you? Uh, did you have a childhood hero? If so, were they? Shania Twain. Oh. Let's go, girls. Man, you feel like a woman. If your life as it stands right now were as good as it ever was going to get, would you be okay with that? Yeah, I feel like things are pretty good. Do you think advanced primates like chimps and apes should be afforded some degree of human rights? <laughs> some of these questions are uh, so we intense. We really looked at each other I like, exactly this is a very, thinking. yeah, very different question than what we got. Human rights, like the right to vote? <laughs> well, no, did you see that? They tried to give, um, I think it was a chimpanzee, so, like a photographer took a picture of oh, the yes. chimp. Oh, yes. And they're like, that chimp didn't get any consent, consent or either consent or like compensation oh. for yeah. like being a model. It was very All right, bizarre. That is yeah. oh. Sorry, that's bullshit. That's immediately what I thought of. I think it was fine. I like <laughs> yeah. treating, treating animals. All animals should be treated humanely, humanly, but and, humanly. But no, in terms of like <laughs> giving them rights, like getting compensated for getting their photo taken yeah. or giving. Well, what, what do you what do you do with that money? What an <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or just like yeah, giving them the right to vote. It's like they don't. Yeah, I wonder members that, of the society. Yeah, I don't human know. Human rights is an interesting way of phrasing that question. I guess yeah, more like specific. freedom. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's still animals, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right guys. Yeah. I yeah. Can't start a question. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I I think if it's worded in a way of should they be treated humanely? Yeah. Then yes, I think they should be, as we've all as said. All animals. But in terms of giving them human rights, they deserve the right to drive. Guys, give that, give chimps cars. <laughs> give chimps cars is what we want. Just give them uh, autonomous cars. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Did you, you Tesla. just look over in the in the lane and there's the? Did you see the video of the guy who fell asleep <laughs> on the? I'm probably gonna get this wrong. I think it was a 405. I think it was somewhere in California. Yeah. The guy who was asleep at the wheel of his Tesla. I'm getting all the yeah, facts on this story wrong. That. Yeah, he was fully asleep, passed out, head on the like side of his car, um, on the highway for 30 minutes. I think eventually. And survived? Yeah. I guess. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, the, the, like, 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 driving on those is yeah. actually, like, pretty good. Like, you yeah. should be able to get there at some point. Right. Yeah. Especially but if he, it's the 405. And he, was, he was asleep for 30 minutes. It was basically a, a guy was driving his car, and his passenger, like, looked over, and he was passed out, and they just, like, recorded a oh ghost car. Yeah. yeah. So if, if that man can sleep and do it, an awake chimp might be all right. Listen, <laughs> they're almost there. I don't hey. know. Is this how Rise of the Planets of the like how the Planet of the Apes happens? Oh, yeah, we give them we have cars. to tell them that we're gonna yeah. get human rights. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna come back and human rights. Find we you. said you should have we human rights. You. Yeah, Take for any car. chimps watching this, we everyone here said you should have human rights. Yes. Give chimps YouTube. Give chimps YouTube. Oh god, what would a chimp YouTube be like? So good. Can you imagine chimp ASMR? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> okay, That's not too loud. the most relaxing. Too loud. Probably not the most relaxing. Okay, Barbara. How much do you spend per year on shoes? Probably like 200 bucks. Hmm. Is that like one pair? Is that one yeah. pair? Mm -hmm. No, it's like probably three pairs. Uh, reflect, reflect back on your, upon yourself of five years ago. How much have you changed as a person? Oh, t a ton. A lot. 
Could you date someone who was very, very funny but could never take anything seriously? No. If you had to name as many famous scientists as you could remember and as many, as many Jesus, famous writers as you could remember, which list would be longer? Writers. 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 Yeah. Writers yeah. yeah. Could you date someone with abnormal amounts of body hair? Abnormal? Abnormal? Yo. <laughs> A chimp. <laughs> <laughs> A chimp. I'd say yeah. I've dated some hairy guys in the past. It wasn't abnormal though. What are yeah? What do we what do we consider? Are we talking like Wolfman? Yeah, like mm. you have to like. Oh, mm. where is it? Oh, okay. we're like abnormal as a nun. Oh. <gasps> Could go the other way. Could yeah, go just naked. Ooh, just bare. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'd prefer. Yeah, so, what would you prefer? Trevor's a very hairy. Yeah, not really. Yeah. He's pretty. He's pretty clean. Yeah. Normal on the abnormal scale. A little otter baby. I feel like we should ask. <laughs> I'm always reminded of Miles because he mm. has one little like the patch. Mark he has right the here. patch. And he has the patch. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. It's just like one patch. little section that has hair on it. We love it though. We stand that patch. We stand <laughs> we Miles. Do we? Patch. Do we? <laughs> we love Miles. We support we will not Miles. Shame his yes, body that's hair. true. Miles, if you're watching, we love everything about you. That's including true. your hairy true. arm patch. <laughs> Hello there! I'm just popping in to tell you that this episode of Always Open is brought to you by Warby Parker. Warby Parker makes high quality, stylish, and affordable glasses that start at only $95, including prescription lenses. Plus, lenses include anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. Warby Parker has made buying glasses online so easy and risk-free with their try -on, uh, home try-on kit. It allows you to order five pairs of glasses shipped directly to your door, where you could try them on in the comfort of your own home and get feedback from your friends and family. Uh, and keep the frames for five days before sending them back for free using the prepaid return shipping label with no obligation to purchase. Uh, do you have an iPhone X? Make sure to download the Warby Parker app where you could use their brand new virtual try-on allowing you to try on eyeglasses, seeing the realistic color, texture, and size of each style using just your phone. Uh, I had to get glasses about a year ago and I, I did the Warby Parker kit. Um, it was my first time ever trying on any glasses, so to get to see all different styles on me was great. And I definitely did the thing where I uploaded it, uh, all the images of me in the glasses, and I got everyone's feedback. Um, if you're listening to this, you might have been one of those people who gave me feedback, so thank you. Um, but it was very easy, and I got to try on all these different types of styles and then mailed the kit back. Very, very easy. Very convenient. Um, try Warby Parker out for yourself and see how good you look in their frames. Go to warbyparker.com slash always open to order your own free home try on kit with free shipping all around. That's warbyparker.com slash always open. Be sure to type lowercase always open. And if you have an iPhone X, be sure to download the Warby Parker app and try their new virtual try on, uh, allowing you to try on eyeglasses, seeing the realistic color, texture, size of each style just using your iPhone. Thank you, Warby Parker. Now back to the show. All right. Well, now that we've gotten to know each other a little more, let's talk about ASMR. Um, I think uh, uh, it's still kind of not a very known uh -uh. thing in the world. There's definitely like a niche on YouTube, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that you've met a lot of people who have discovered it through you and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, it's weird. Um, <laughs> so we have a couple questions for you and, and for, I guess, the whole table. So the first one is, how did you get into ASMR? I was, I think it was 2010, so I was a sophomore in high school. Mm. I couldn't sleep at all, ever, at night. I would like have like panic attacks, like when I'm trying to fall asleep, you know, like you just start thinking about things. And so I would just go on my phone, go on YouTube, watch anything. Yeah. And then so it's like you get into one of those YouTube holes. I think I was watching like, they had a long time ago, like the, like the virtual haircut. Oh, like, yeah. remember that? Yeah. A long time. That was the one? first yeah. Is that time. Like the OG. That was the first yes, time I'd ever. It's gotta be. Yeah, heard like binaural, and mm -hmm. you could hear them in your ear. You're like, yeah. oh, whoa. Yeah. You know? I yeah, forgot about <laughs> yeah. that one. Mm -hmm. And I think like that, plus like I'd watch like massage videos because they're nice. Mm -hmm. You like kind of live vicariously through the person. Yep. And then like I found the whisper community. That's what it was. So that, it's already had started back then in 2010. Yeah, I think it started in 2008. Wow. So I like. Started watching it fairly, fairly early, or it was like 2006, I think somebody like po posted the very first Whisper video. Mm. But yeah, I, I was watching it for years and years and years. Like every night, I'd watch it while I was studying, because I couldn't like listen to music because I'd sing along and yep. distract. Anything <laughs> with lyrics. Literally, yeah. So I would like listen to it while I was studying, listen to it to fall asleep every night, all this stuff. And so I majored in film in college. So I was senior year and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel. And I'm gonna do ASMR. Hell yeah. And I'm just gonna see if it works. Yeah. So you've been doing it for how long? Three years. Wow. Three years, yeah. So you were literally just like on a whim, like, yeah, 
okay, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I always, I loved YouTube. Yeah. And I was like, this is something that, like, I love the community. It was so like, there was no drama. It was so like everyone just wants to what chill. A different time yeah. than YouTube, everyone though. just wanted to chill because uh, yeah, back then like YouTube was very loud, very like all over the place, and yeah. so I was like, this appeals to me very much, especially as like somebody I'm just filming out of my my room. Like I don't feel like I have anything like crazy like important to say. I'm like, let me just just do this, relax you, yeah. and see if anyone you know mm -hmm. catches on. So, um, yeah. and this is a, this is gonna be a question for the whole table. But how did you discover that you I guess mm. you have ASMR or that you get ASMR? Yeah. What is the term for that? Well, it's interesting because like ASMR is like the tingles that you get like in either with like mm -hmm. personal attention or sounds or whatever, um, but it's also used to describe like the genre. So it's gotcha. like you watch ASMR videos, but you're not necessarily feeling like the tingles like 100% of the time. Like no, not yeah. at all. Um, but I remember like getting like the tingles like when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like really young, and I remember like weirdly like very detailed parts of my childhood. Um, like I, I was in like first grade and somebody was reading like a math word problem out loud and like my first grade brain I was like if I was on my deathbed I'd want her to read this to me. <laughs> Oh like look God. back now, I was like, how did I know what death that was? Yeah, what about I don't know. <laughs> if I'm dying, this is all yeah. I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> It'll relax me just to my yeah. head, forever sleep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I had a ton of experiences like that. It's like people like mm -hmm. drawing things for me or like getting my face painted mm -hmm. or something. And I'm sure you didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. it One. was like indescribable. And then when I looked up ASMR, it was like crazy. I was like, oh my God, like that's, that's a it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was weird. I remember my first time getting it. It was, I was at summer camp and uh, I was in my bunk with a bunch of the girls and we were talking and standing in like a circle just chatting and I guess my tag was sticking out of my back and this girl just reached over and like put it in there and like the way she like just touched mm -hmm. me it made like all the hair on my the head touch stand of up a woman, and Barbara. I was just like <laughs> <laughs> but it was weird because I was like 10 mm, or something yeah. and mm -hmm. I was just like what <laughs> it's just like pleasant. They said something. Um, yeah. yeah, it was just like pleasant, and like I felt this rush of tingle all over mm -hmm. me, and I was like, I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Am I into her? <laughs> what does this mean? Why not both? Get and then both. ever since then, it's just like certain people's voices and pitches. Mm. But also, I found that like, especially women's voices, but very delicate women who are like tend to be more petite and have like long fingers who are talking and doing. <laughs> I don't. No, like, you don't. You don't. <laughs> Not weird at all. It's like, way, I get it. It's like I their it. hand movement yes, and the way they like course. enunciate things mm -hmm. and something like that. I like, must be the biggest very turn off. Very <laughs> <laughs> Delicate little Mariel. <laughs> I have little fingers, but they're not very delicate. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like it's hard to describe, but something mm -hmm. about it, I'm just like I just want to like get it. Watch you talk. Mm -hmm. Like it. it just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. well, you, you have gay ASMR. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, it sounded like you said gay, gay ASMR. ASMR. I was like, <laughs> true. <laughs> Um, Which we are. It is, pro well, huh? we're filming Happy this Pride. in June. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Um, no, I, it's it's similar. I We were talking before um, the show, but I similarly had, for me, it was probably what it is for a lot of people, was Bob Ross. Mm. Um, Love him. I remember, like, I would be homesick, and I would watch Bob Ross, and I definitely would get the tingles, and I was like, oh, this is just, like, so, as a kid, you don't have the words or the language no. to describe what you're experiencing. So I was just like, something about this man is so deeply calming at a physical level, um, and it was so powerful. And I was saying, even I had an eye doctor when I was a kid who, when he would do, because I have terrible eyes, I had to go all the time, and he would do the, which is better, is it oh, one God. or two? And it was like, the you're proximity. You're getting me right now. Yeah, yeah, like, the proximity and, like, the just the mechanical, just this, like even the, the sound yeah. of the mechanical clicks and him saying that I was like what's like happening a dark room. yeah it's like, a dark yeah. room it was the, everything about it was just very it's soothing. also like a level of personal attention it, yeah yeah Absolutely. they're paying attention to you mm -hmm. but yeah I was gonna say wait yeah. do you have an because I know you do role play do you have an uh, uh an optometrist one yeah that was Fun. one of the oh, first yeah, yeah. Get on that <laughs> shit tonight. that was one of the first videos that started like garnering like some mm. sort of like views and, yeah because mm -hmm. oh, cool. and that's so yeah. it's just so funny because yeah. like so many people like agree oh it's, and it sounds so weird you say it out loud and like Exactly. Yeah. I think now that it's more, it's becoming more mainstream. I think um, it's being used in. We were. I was talking to Texas about it beforehand. Like it's being used in advertisements. Like during the Super Bowl, yeah. there was the Zoe Kravitz thing. Um, I think people are starting to 
hear about it more and understand it more so when you explain these things, they're all universal understandings of like, yeah, it's nice and calming to hear soft voices speaking in a very soothing way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, or someone doing something for yeah, you. Yeah, doing some, uh, being something. attentive, those things all make sense. And I was saying too, like right before, like very much like you said, I have anxiety and OCD, so I have intrusive thoughts. I have a lot of problems sleeping. And for me, it was a means of shutting my brain off. Yeah. It was having something that I could give my brain to focus on when I'm trying to sleep mm -hmm. that isn't the things I don't want to think about. So being able to put on ASMR videos while I'm trying to go to bed and have my brain go, I'm going to listen to the, the example I gave Meryl is a weird one, but I was like a woman sorting through a pile of keys. Like she was just yeah. moving keys. Sorting, yeah. Yeah. That like, amazing. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> like the tank the, the soft, keys. Yeah. But it was like my brain goes, okay, this thing, I have a sensory input coming in that I can focus on and it focuses on that. So I don't have the thoughts that usually would keep me awake. And so it is very effective. I think for me, at least for managing my anxiety and my thoughts and letting me actually go to sleep, which yeah. is so valuable. It's I used so to listen helpful. to it when I was cleaning my apartment. Mm, like I would that is so nice. And just like do it because oh, like, yeah, it's like this weird thing where you could concentrate it on it, but it also turns your brain off in mm -hmm. a way where it's like you could just focus on something else and not really think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it like cleaning yeah. go by really fast. So I would too. study and like yeah. write papers to it. Yeah. I think that's a great point because same thing yeah. with yeah. music. I could only listen to instrumental music when I was studying because I would end up singing and getting distracted. And yeah, yeah. Same thing with people who say they listen to podcasts while they work. I'm like, you are an expert yeah. level multitasker. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't hear listen. anything that's yeah. going on in the podcast. I would just I would hear voices. tune out and yeah. I would miss half of what they mm -hmm. talked about. And I guess that's fine if you just want something to distract you. But yeah, yeah I yeah. think it's really good for that kind of stuff, being able to Absolutely. center you and, and take away distraction and uh, calm you down. Yeah. It's well, incredibly it's, valuable. It's funny because we talk about you know, a lot of mental health issues on the show a lot. And I think something we don't often bring up is ASMR as, right. as a way as to, like a coping mm -hmm. yeah. tool. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Have you ever experienced it, Meryl? Yeah. Uh, when you said the the haircut thing, like I was instantly thrust back into like 2000. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, God. It's so long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a, there's a, it's it's not actually not an ASMR thing, but it's a podcast that I would listen to. I listen to it mostly on flights because I get, I'm a nervous flyer now. Um, but it's this podcast called Sleep With Me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, well, I actually got to meet the guy who does it at a convention that we were at not too long ago, but he just talks like this and he just drones on and on and on. And it's not like a, more of a tingle, it's more of just like a, oh God, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. my brain Almost into mush. boring you. Yeah it's, yeah, it's like he's literally boring you to sleep and it's it was one of the things that I like listened to on a flight. It was actually my flight to Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> I fucked up <laughs> nearly. Um, you needed to be reassured. I, mean, yeah, I needed to like, <laughs> I was all over the place. Um, and so, you know, it was one of those, of those things, but, um, my my girlfriend likes to watch uh, like art restoration videos. I love those. Mm. Those yeah. are satisfying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's the one that I got. I can't remember the name of it now, but it's that that one guy in New York or, mm -hmm. or Chicago. I don't remember what it is, but he it's like 14 minute videos of him just like taking the grime off of paintings with yeah. like cotton swabs. It's so satisfying. Yeah. She watches those and she does like she'll she watches like makeup tutorials mm -hmm. yeah at, at to go to bed mm -hmm. and i never understood it that's what i used to do yeah, yeah. that's a like gateway yeah that's gateway <laughs> yeah. ASMR. absolutely it is. let me tell you there is one makeup artist i'm totally blanking on her name but she has this like beautiful british accent and like very kind of a calming voice mm. she's like all right we're just going to take some of this brush and just <laughs> yeah uh, talk to me <laughs> it's the most calming thing yeah it's um, great this is what I'm curious about, because I'm sure there's plenty, but Ooh. what are some misconceptions about ASMR? Mm, misconceptions. I, think, I mean, I think the biggest one is that people think it's sexual. sexual. Yep. Yeah. That's always, and it's, it's actually gotten a lot better, thank mm -hmm. God. So I've been doing, like, you know, since I've had my channel for three years, and I've noticed that question getting asked less and less, which is nice, because I feel like we've, everyone who does ASMR, they get asked it in every single interview, and I think we're finally hammering it home. We're yeah. like, no, no, mm -mm. yeah. <laughs> no. It's not for sexual. <laughs> but it's just like, um, like the base, like ASMR itself, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's just not sexual. And they, they, they've done studies on like people's brains and, you're, and like ASMR causes people's brains to shut down and calm down. Yeah. So it's literally the opposite of sexual arousal. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, well there's science. <laughs> and then there's also just like everybody's, you know, personal story. Like, well, I'm not watching it for, for sexual reasons. Like I can tell you that that's the truth. Um, right. Mm -hmm. But with literally anything, you can make it sexual. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah. the same thing with like, I, I, I really love cosplaying and things like that. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, cosplay itself, are you gonna say that that's sexual and that a kid, a kid isn't allowed to cosplay because cosplay, you know? Right. right. So, like, when kids like do ASMR, they're like, kids can't do ASMR, it's freaky. Yeah, yeah. there was yeah. that whole, yeah. um, I can't remember her name, but the redhead. Like, Life with Mac. Yes, I it's horrible. Love yeah. her. She yeah, so she, do she, she did ASMR. She did. She did. And YouTube funny. is shutting her down. Yeah. yeah. 
they're shutting her down and taking down videos because they say that it's inappropriate and that like God. people will fetishize it. It's, yeah, it's yeah. under the guise of protecting. And I've her. had a, I've had a yeah. ton of, of yeah. videos demonetized where you know I'm yeah. like I'm like just because I'm a a, a woman yeah. I'm like it doesn't like inherently make anything sexual mm -hmm. but I mean like absolutely you can make it sexual right, right. it's the same as a massage same as like, same yeah. as like yeah. a, anything yeah anything so. can do that yeah. a cucumber you can eat it or you can fuck it yeah yeah listen <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna ban vegetables yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna ban vegetables mm -hmm. uh, videos with vegetables Ooh, in them we're gonna mm -hmm. demonetize demonetize yeah, no I yeah. love I love her and mm -hmm. I'm really upset with what's happening to her yeah she's great she's fighting back Good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She's been oh, real yeah. sassy. She's fighting back. Yeah. How old is she? She's like 13, 13. 13? Yeah, something 13, 14, like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just in her teens. Yeah. Do you ever get um, people who are saying like, oh, this is weird or I don't understand it or anything like that? Because mm -hmm. uh, every time I bring up ASMR about people who don't know much about it, they're just like, oh, like, isn't it weird? Like, isn't it just like people like eating into the microphone? I was like, there's like so Eating is new. Mm -hmm. Eating is new and now everyone thinks it's eating. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I don't like eating sounds. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> it's okay, not a lot of, not a lot of people I do. think the problem is people don't listen to it in the right context mm -hmm. the first time or they'll click on a video that's like super like, because there's like, you can you can you can watch anything in ASMR. Yeah, yeah. It's so a, it's like, it's why don't you me? start with a nice tapping video in your bed with headphones? It's dark, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just like people will pull up like the most random role play, like Ellen DeGeneres, mm -hmm. like blast it on her show. Yeah. And I'm like, of course it's weird. You're like yeah. blasting it, in like the middle of the day. Yeah. It's also yeah, weird. contextually, it's yeah, not contextually the place, so it's not weird. the way you would watch it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But yeah. it's like yeah. Ease yourself into it mm -hmm. and yeah. try out different stuff. I always recommend people watch like either like hair cutting videos or you can tapping to sounds. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because like I think some people might be weirded out by talking sometimes because mm. if like if they're new to ASMR, it might be like, why is this person talking? And to I me? get really in your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll get up to the camera, you know. And so it, it is like intimate. <laughs> so you know, I'm like, you know, fight your front fight on a ASMR. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different kind of go to sleep. Go the fuck to sleep. Um, what about you? Do you still get tingles? Yeah. yeah. I watch like at least three videos a day. I watch so many, like some people have like their like one person that they'll watch. I watch like everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually started off with, I'm totally forgetting her name. I could probably. I'm already <laughs> like, you out. Well, I'm yeah. already thinking of like who she Was it Gentle Whispering? Because I feel like she's everywhere. I watched her too, but she was not the first person. Mm -hmm. It was a girl who had like dark hair and like a very high pitched voice. Hmm. And, and she- Is it a mall? I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and okay. tell you after. I'm curious, yeah. But I just I stumbled upon that. her video one day and I was just like, this is really calming. You should <laughs> check out more of these. <laughs> yeah. And I'm shocked at how many there are, too. Mm. There's yeah. like, oh, yeah. it blew Flash. up, too. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Is there a yeah. certain amount or a certain, uh, I, I don't know, genre or type that you enjoy more than the others? Yeah, like, like, what's your favorite? Yeah, I watch role plays because I like the distraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If it's just somebody tapping, I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, let's get to the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My Lay it on me. <laughs> And it's fun. It's immersive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Well, yeah, definitely check out ASMR. What's your YouTube channel if people want to check you out? GB ASMR. There you go. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So the first question we have for our segment questions for mm -hmm. all of you lovely ladies, uh, submitted by Noel T. And Noel wants to know what is something unusual that relaxes you. Mm. I would say that for me. I don't, I guess it's hard because I'm like, I don't know what you consider unusual. Like people would probably describe, some people would describe ASMR as unusual, but I don't think right. it is. So yeah. that relaxes me, obviously. Um, I really like, what's the right term for this? Like mending my clothes, like sewing oh, yeah, buttons sure. on yeah. things. Like I have like a pile of clothes because I, I go thrift, thrifting a lot. I buy a lot of my clothes at thrift stores and stuff. Um, and you find the cutest things. Oh, yeah, well, I try. Anna always looks adorable. Um, I don't know how she does it. Not, that's very sweet of you. Not necessarily true. I look like a troll most of the time. She does. But, Don't um, listen to her. <laughs> but anyway, so I buy a lot of clothes that have seen wear and tear, and so they'll be missing buttons. They'll have like little holes in them, or they'll need some kind of like small adjustments. And I love just having like a little thing of like you know a handful of clothes that I need to sit down, and I just take like needle and thread, and I just sit and like put buttons, like fix buttons, mend little holes, or like if I want to add like a strap or something, I can like do that, and I'll just sit there. For like a couple hours, like mending. Is that the right, like mending clothes? Yeah, yeah, that's Sewing, nice. Mending, yeah, fixing. But, yeah, fixing up my clothes. And like watching, like putting on something and just sitting there and sewing and Well shit, if I knew that. that. I got a bunch of clothes I just got rid of because they had holes in them, Hannah. Oh. Well, you <laughs> could have let me know. I'd but be did they bring there. you joy? No. That's right. I thanked them and I them. threw them out. <laughs> 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 yeah, I find that very calming. Or or like you were, like I think you kind of mentioned it too. I think if I'm in a really frustrated headspace or like really stressed out, 
cleaning. Yes. Oh, like cleaning. just said, and I don't like cleaning generally. I do not, I'm not like a very tidy person. Um, but when I am like stressed out, I'm like, I'm cleaning it all. Mm. Like I'm doing the day you were doing your closet. I was cleaning right. my entire apartment. Yeah. Just going and being like, I want everything like moved. And it gives me something to do. I put headphones on and I just like run around my apartment dancing and cleaning. Yeah. It's very therapeutic. That's always been relaxing. something that relaxes me is cleaning my yeah. space. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of the anxiousness I get when my place is messy mm. or disorganized that's and knowing I mean. like that's gonna go away when I clean it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to do this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cleaning itself is not fun, but the mm -hmm. idea of like, I'm gonna take it today and just like clean everything and organize So it's everything. doable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. It's doable and, you can, and you're done and you can see it. You like plan mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah. That's so funny. I was gonna say having a clean house is what relaxes me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like tidying. I don't like cleaning. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Like yes. I hate cleaning. Deep like, cleaning is not. I don't mind nothing. tidying. Yeah. Putting everything away. That's nice. Or, <laughs> yeah. I always love like rearranging my stuff too. Oh god. I just I did know. that at my place. Makes it feel like a new place. Oh yeah. It's amazing. Like if, if you so just move like I a table. I that. I kind of want to now. Give it a dumb. shot. Oh, yeah. I flip my dining table around to the other Ooh. side. Oh, <laughs> like I have a new house. Yeah. Ooh. It what? feels what like brand new. That's yeah. I used to do that with my apartment all the time. I would just like move my dining table like the other orientation yeah. or like mm -hmm. move this dresser over here instead. Yeah. And be like, oh. It refreshes yeah. the space. Yeah. 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 I needed my dining table because I felt like it was so big and clunky and I was like I literally about to buy a new one and my mom was visiting. She was like, oh, why don't you just like flip it? And we did and it was like, mom, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason she's a mom. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's got the answer for everything. She has the answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I have an interesting um, little thing and it's gonna be a shout out to uh, someone in our community. But a few years ago, I opened up my Snapchat to the public and got thousands of dick pics, so then I closed it. Mm. But <laughs> in in uh, the sea of dick pics, I um, had a few people who would just send me like, like things of their life and like, this is what I'm doing today. Here's this dog I saw and like, just like random That's things. So, cute. so there was people that I like added as friends on my Snapchat because I was like, oh, I, like, I want to see your content. Like, yeah. Yeah. keep, keep you know, sending me stuff. And there was one particular guy, his name is Mario. He's in New York and he lives on a tugboat. I remember you telling um, me about what? Like, certain You can live on those? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, like, work, he, like, live in, he lives and works on a tugboat like certain times of the year. And so he just started sending me Snapchats of his life on the tugboat and being like, this is what this thing does and this is what this thing does. And like, here's this chart and like, here's how we go and this is what we're doing today. And like, I've gotten to the point now where I bank them up and I won't watch them for like two weeks. When <laughs> you I'm at, save like, them? I'm, when I'm at like my most anxious, I'll just like lay in bed and just be like, tugboat, 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 tug tug yeah. tug tugboat. And it's, it's, it's like the, you know. That's it's, amazing. It's, I like don't get the tingles from it, but it's very much like a soothing. very soothing and very calming yeah. and just like, mm -hmm a world that I will never understand. And mm -hmm. this guy is just like, oh, like this is, here's this line. And he has this like Brooklyn mm -hmm. accent, which is funny because it's not like, you know, um, but he, It's like you know, the most like aggressive accent. <laughs> yeah, but I love <laughs> it. All right, here's my, here's my dog boat. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, oh, like here's this line. And like, here's, you know, that like we're going down the Hudson today or he, you know, they're uh, like back in during the winter, he was like showing me like the sheets of ice that they're like mm -hmm. floating through. Mm -hmm. I fucking love it. It's the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. We've become, Pen pals now. He <laughs> sent me like nautical charts. Yeah, the internet. Up at my yeah. house. Yeah. I feel like I was with you one day when you got those. Yeah. I was like, what is this? Yeah, I have I have merch. I have tugboat yep. merch. I have mm -hmm. little shot glasses that say tugboats rock. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What is this? Big fan of tugboats. Tugboat Who queen. Funny. Tugboat Muriel. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It, it was just one. It was just like this I just started watching unusual. it because yeah, yeah. That is, I mean, yeah that's just a... some guy living his life in New York who sends me videos of his mm -hmm. tugboat life, and I just like. Watch it and I calm down. The tug life. Love it. So, so tug life. good. Tug life. Tug life. Tug life, baby. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything unusual either that relaxes me. Yeah. Like, I guess cleaning is like kind of normal. Yeah. Like people would associate that with relaxation. But fairly common, probably. Yeah. yeah. But there is um, like certain. There's a certain makeup artist that I've worked with in the past, who she does makeup so gently and mm. so slowly. Like she'll take a brush and just be like. Yeah. <laughs> And like every time I know I'm gonna work with her, I'm just like, oh, I know I'm gonna get the tingles today because she's just like so meticulous about everything. You hear that, Texas? You gotta be a little bit more you meticulous. <laughs> Texas in there, just like. Pop, 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 pop. Well, because he's gotta get dense. through like four of us. Too. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I honestly just getting my makeup done in general always makes me very yeah. relaxed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's again the personal attention. We're going back to ASMR. Yeah, yeah. see it all comes Actually, back to ASMR. It, Texas, we, he always has Texas little whispers, and we'll be in there, and he'll say something naughty to me, and then he'll he'll like get in real close and like whisper it in my ear. Oh. He said he was gonna he was gonna <laughs> do some ASMR makeup to you. I don't know if he did. Did oh. you? Did you? 
Yeah, what did I talk about? Eyebrows and Beyonce. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you do have good brows. Thank you. That's you. admiring them. They're microbladed. Oh, so. they're beautiful. They're beautiful. <laughs> I want to get Thank mine. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Whatever relaxes you. Hey, mm -hmm. whatever works. And there's been like a time or two where I've been at the dentist and it's relaxed. The uh -uh. Wow. Yeah, I mean, not yeah, when you're doing the cleaning and like scraping it. Peaks my stress. But just like there's times when like, they're just like looking at something. When they're checking. Yeah. Okay. Where that's like, fair. Yeah. Oh. Like you're wearing yeah. those sunglasses yeah. and you just fall asleep. I would say that's eye doctor. Like eye doctor is the best for eye me. Like great. maybe that's unusual, but people who go to the eye doctor like that that's checking it. your yeah. vision, like where they're flipping through Not the different lenses. That's the one. Associate that. Well, with and also a lot of people don't necessarily have that experience. If you yeah. have good eyes mm -hmm. and you don't have to get that stuff done. No, I'm there all the time. I'm sad too. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. Haircuts never did it for me. I was like, yeah, eh, just cut my hair. Yeah. yeah. Haircuts nice. also, like, I feel like sometimes they're a little too, like, it's brushing in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like never sitting, just like, you're like, wet, sweaty. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I've got that cape on that's like, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I've never looked this ugly before. Yeah. <laughs> you're you, like, oh. When you sit there in the mirror and you're just like, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like you're being punished. You have to look <laughs> at yourself. And then I like, I usually like the hair washing part, but there's so many hair washing stations oh. where like, you're oh, neck custom. Neck. Oh. Every yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's oh, one yeah. I went to that had like a padded neck Ooh. thing and it was like perfectly angled. <gasps> and they do this thing where they also do the head massage. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. A head like, massage is great. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've been the one. Like, <laughs> the bench like lifted up, so you were horizontal. The haircut was terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I can't come back here. But yeah, you're hey. like the cost yeah. benefit is not oh, yeah. good. I'll enough. just get there to get my hair washed. Yeah, there was like, a there. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's like a blowout maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good call. Hello, it's me again, and I'm here to tell you that this episode of Always Open is also brought to you by Noom. Getting in shape isn't just about losing weight. It's about learning healthier habits and feeling better about yourself, whether that's more stamina to keep you up with your busy life, finally getting into those goal genes, or practicing more self-care. Uh, I recently started using the Noom app, and it is unlike any other weight loss or health app I've ever used. They actually teach you about different things, about getting healthy, about your mindset and goals, uh, and you get to work with an actual person who specializes in these things. Uh, it's not just about tracking your calories or tracking your exercise, it's so much more than that. And it has helped me learn so much about health in such a more broad way. I cannot recommend it enough. It's so easy and so insightful. Uh, Noom is a habit-changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. Based in psychology, Noom teaches you why you do the things you do and arms you with the tools to break the bad habits and replace them with better ones. Noom is one of the biggest and most accurate food databases uh, available that lets you track meal habits, visualize portion sizes, and see calorie density at a glance. Noom isn't a diet, it's a healthy and easy to stick to way of life. No food is good, bad, or off limits. Noom teaches moderation and can be used in conjunction with many pre-existing popular diets if you want. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Uh, you could sign up for your trial today at Noom, that's N-O-O-M, dot com slash open. Uh, what do you have to lose? Just visit Noom, dot com slash open to start your trial today. That's Noom, dot com slash open. Back to the show. Um, all right, well, this next question comes from Leslie I, mm -hmm. and Leslie would like to know, if you weren't doing what you do now, what career would you pursue? Mm hmm. Mm. Interesting. Tugboat life. Yeah. yeah. Tugboat, no, tugboat, tugboat captain. Tugboat. You know everything now. Captain. I know everything. Yeah. It's hard to imagine not doing something in entertainment now. Mm. Yeah. I guess like after doing it for eight years, uh, imagining like not doing stuff on camera or doing something in production is like weird to me, even though growing up, that's never what I wanted to do. Really? Mm. It's the most, what did you want to do? I wanted to work in advertising. Oh. oh. Yeah. And so I went to school for marketing and stuff like that, okay. thinking I would just get a job like making commercials or something yeah, yeah. like that. Because I like to write stupid jokes. And so I was like, I could write I slogans. Commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I could write slogans all day and jingles and all that stuff. It'll be great. Not um, yeah. knowing anything yeah. about how like That's so, oh you get God. in there. The, the industry is kind of scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's very scary, yeah. So oh, yeah. if any of this doesn't work out, <laughs> um, start your maybe, jingle bit. Business. Maybe that's what I'll be doing, yeah. Barbara's jingles. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, when you're a YouTuber, you just assume that your channel is going down like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're like, I have no security whatsoever. Do you have any backup plans? Oh, like, I'm sure you got to. You, you well, I'm on your Twitch. Heart. Oh, and I, I and don't. Congrats! Yeah. You just hit like two million, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Two million oh, subscribers on YouTube. Thank yeah. you. Very that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. 
Oh my God. Like, and, and yeah. yeah, when I started, like, ASMR, it was just like a corner of the internet. Yeah. When did you, yeah. uh, we're, I know we're getting a little off topic, but when did you realize, like, before putting your first video out and then being like, oh shit, like, I can do this? Or were you, like, head on, like, I'm doing this as a. I went guy. in, I went in, like, with a plan. Oh, okay. I was like, well, because I was a senior in college. Right. I was like, either this works or I have to get a job. I was, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of like post production work. I was like, I was, an, I was editing, mm. editor, you know? And that's the first thing I hired out. I feel like that's, like, like, that's a good thing to start <laughs> with. Never that again. Yeah. 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 Editing is like a good first step. It's a foundation. I was so comfortable skill. with the computer. I was so, you know, I'm like, okay. I was too scared mm. to go into theater. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, so if you weren't doing this, what do you think you would have? What would you, what would your path have been? I was gonna be. I was gonna do commercial editing. Yeah. Yeah. We could have worked. The, and the world yeah. was terrifying, and it was so scary. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, and everyone was really nice, but yeah. I'm like, I'm. I still don't think this is for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, being able to do something like by myself is like kind of cool. Your own yeah. And you, you have so many internet friends. Yeah. 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 No. 100%. It's awesome. I love yeah. how like accepted in common that is now though. Oh yeah. Internet friends. Oh, They're yeah. so real. Even when I started on the internet back in like early 2000s and I got really into the Rooster community in 2003, 2004, the idea of like going to meet people you've met on the internet was still so like... You're gonna get murdered. You're oh gonna yeah. Die. You're gonna die. You know yeah. these people? Like you only know them on the internet. Yeah. So like they're all gonna kill you. And so I remember the first time I ever went to do like a community meetup, my parents came with me. Because they're just like, we don't know these people, you don't know these people. And like after that they're like, all right. Good. <laughs> are you good? Yeah. <laughs> these are clearly just a bunch mm -hmm. of good people that you clearly know. Yeah. But I love how now it's just like, yeah, my internet friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great thing about RTX is seeing all the like, people who you see interact mm -hmm. all, all day and then they like come together and yeah. do the first time. This is going to come out after yeah. RTX. Yeah. So. Oh, it is. RTX is great. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> we had a great time. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> but internet friends, man. Yeah. They're the best. Mm -hmm. What do you think you'd be doing? You said tugboat captain, but tugboat captain other than for tugboat sure. Captain. I'm going to call up Mario. I'll be like, listen, it's time. Um, I don't know. I mean, I maybe. Uh, you know, I've always kind of thought about afterwards, um, thought about going back to grad school mm -hmm. and like doing something mm -hmm. in business. You're very business savvy. You're I very like, smart. Like money. Yeah, yeah, with money, you're very, very, very smart. Money. I like meat. I like swords. <laughs> Trying to find something that can come. Real. All my three passions. Yeah, that is like the trifecta. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're you good. Um, I, would, I would meat, think like money, and swords. Starting a business for like steak knives. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Shaped like swords, little swords. Sell little swords that cut I would cut love meat. a little sword yeah. to like, a little, yeah. Just, Ooh, yeah. That's great. I don't yeah. want to take it. This is like a super <laughs> off tangent, but there was a thread on Reddit, or not Reddit, uh, Twitter the other day of this guy talking about how his dad is basically the Asian Ron Swanson. <gasps> I love I that. that. It was you so it? good. And he oh. talks about how yeah. his dad so is good. convinced mm -hmm. that like, you don't need a bunch of different knives in the kitchen. Big cutlery. Conspiracy. Big cutlery. Yeah, yeah. big cutlery conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so he thinks he just has one giant meat cleaver that, that he, he cuts for everything. everything. Oh my god, he just looks this man up. I if love he's him. A, his dad sounds amazing. Uh, like actually, amazing. Ron Swanson. Yeah, I need really great. Yeah. And Nick, uh, I was Nick gonna, Offerman commented he on it. it. Yeah, yeah. He it. He was, was like, like, this is good. <laughs> yeah, he approved. It was great. It was so accurate. Yeah. So something in those. I don't know. I mean, I I think about like what life will be like if I ever leave Rooster Teeth. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but you know, like, I, I would probably try and do something in, in finance. I'd try mm -hmm. and go that route. So it's a good, good business to be in. Yeah. Money, good. baby. Industry. I do a lot of, like, I do a lot, like, I help my parents, my, both my parents are, like, independent business owners and stuff, so I've always kind of grown up with that, like, mindset. So yeah. mm -hmm. doing something like that would be fun, I think. Yeah. What about you, Hannah? Mm -hmm. Both of my parents are lawyers, so that was very much the hope for me. <laughs> um, and it was definitely something I thought about a lot. Um, I was an English and film major when I was in college, and there was this kind of echoing refrain from my parents all the time. It's like, you could still go to law school. <laughs> um, I feel like you'd make a good lawyer. You would make a great lawyer. I get I mean, that you'd make a, good a lot. Anything. <laughs> um, no, I, I definitely have, I thought about going to law school because when I was graduating, when I was a senior, I had zero job prospects. I was very, scary. yeah, very afraid. Didn't really know what I was gonna do. I um, very much thought about like, well, I would like to work in film and TV, but that is such, it seems like such a barrier to entry for people who don't know people who work in it and things like that. And uh, something like law school, which is like an insane thing to be like, that's a great thing I could maybe do because it's so expensive and it's so many years oh and it's God, like such yeah. a commitment. Um, competitive. It's competitive, it's deeply competitive. So I, and I also just kind of was, it's a question of like, what did I want to do? Um, and while I think I probably would be a decent lawyer because I was raised by two lawyers, like arguments were, 
Not oh, fun. No, I didn't even think <laughs> about fun that. In our house. Well, it was just one of those like uh, I was did you ever win. Never. 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 No. And it was. I actually think it was a good thing for me because I learned very strong debate skills from a young age. Okay. I never won, but I saw <laughs> things they would do that would get me, and I was like, I'm gonna use that next time. Now next I kind of want to meet them um, just so I can. Win. Oh, okay. yeah, wonderful. You've met them, I yeah. Met them. They're super sweet, but they, and, and they both are, you know, they work in like contract law, like very boring, you know, not, they're not trial lawyers. But my mom has said to me, cause I've joked about like, well, I'm gonna go back to law school. Um, She's like, you actually probably wouldn't be a very good lawyer. And I was like, rude, first of all. Um, how dare you? Uh, but she made a fair point, which was, I am a very, I fight to win. Mm -hmm. I really want, I'm like, I want to win this argument. And I, think, the, I would think that would make a good lawyer. Well, so that's good for lawyers who are in trial law, like people who are in courtrooms and are trying to win a case. Mm -hmm. Majority of lawyers are in business and it's all about mm. compromise and being able to mitigate yeah. loss right. and work with different people and be very collaborative. Um, so all of my parents' law is like, we gotta make sure everybody's on the same page. We all can like come to an agreement. And I'm like, I will kill you. I will take you down. <laughs> I will win this fight. I don't care if I die trying. Regardless of what I have to yeah. do. Go be a I will, I will go down with this ship. I don't care if I sink yeah, it myself. Yeah, be a lawyer. God. Yeah. Criminal lawyer. Yeah, go but I just feel like that's so exhausting. I, I think we talked about this at the, um, one of the other Always Open episodes where I was saying like, I've thought about wanting to do like animal advocacy, yeah. like law and animal advocacy, but I was like, God, that would just be heart wrenching. I Which is why people need to do it. Like people should do it. And it's an incredibly important thing. Like I think about that a lot. Like if I was a lawyer, I'd probably want to be like, I'm taking down, you know, animal fighting rings and then probably going home and crying every night. Yeah. You know, I don't know why, but my mind instantly pictured like a little cat in like the <laughs> juror stand. <laughs> And you're just like, Mr. Pussy over here. <laughs> Mr. Pussy. <laughs> that is the cat's name. That's Mr. Fluff. Hannah, Mr. Go, Fluff. Go and be a trial lawyer, lawyer because mm -hmm. I want to do a lot of crime. You want to do a lot of I crime? I want to do a lot of crime, and I'm yeah. going to need some You help. want like With a villanelle tempo. relationship yeah. here yeah, where I'm hunting crime. you down and <laughs> you're committing crimes? No, 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 I want you to be my lawyer. <laughs> oh, I'll be your lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's I'll be like, your lawyer. That's really her interest in money, <laughs> stealing a lot. <laughs> As long as, yeah. She's gonna do a crime and escape on her tugboat. Yes. yes. Yeah, she's Listen, gonna, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to a have aspirations. Yeah. Be gay, yeah. do crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. This episode is also brought to you by Honey. Let's talk about something we could all agree on, saving money. I know Meryl will be a big proponent of that. Honey is a free browser extension that scans the web for coupon codes and discounts while you shop online. Is there anything better than that? Uh, Honey automatically applies the biggest savings to your cart at checkout, like magic. It works on over 20,000 sites, like Amazon, eBay, New Egg Razor, and more. It takes zero effort to install, just two clicks, and you'll start saving while you shop online. Um, I've used Honey many times, because I shop online all the time. Uh, just the other week, I saved $26 on a new pair of shoes. Can't ask for anything better than that. Meryl saved, I think she said, $16 on new hair products. It's like essentially free money. Um, but instead of just taking my word for it, listen to what actual users have to say about Honey. Uh, user Morgan is cool said, Honey just saved me $27 on an order that would have been $90, and I honestly almost stood up and gave my whole damn office the YouTuber sponsor post spiel, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> so listen to Morgan. You might think it sounds too good to be true, like it's free and it saves you money, so what's the catch? It's pretty simple. When you use a coupon provided by Honey, they earn a small commission from the merchant and they pass along some of the savings to their members, so it's a win-win for everyone. Look, there's really no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use and easy to install on your computer in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash rooster. That's joinhoney.com slash rooster. Honey, online savings amplified. Thank you, Honey. Back to the show. All right, last but not least, our fabulous boy box of issues. Completely unrelated. Boy. Which is always good. Mm. All right, this question comes from Taylor. Mm. And Taylor writes. Humble advice. Yeah. Hey, always open. I'll be meeting my boyfriend's parents for the first time soon. Mm. There are a few things, however, that are riddling me with anxiety. His dad can be toxic at times with power tripping and semi-degrading and passive aggressive comments. Mm. My boyfriend and I come from pretty different backgrounds. He's from the big city in Colorado. I'm from a tiny town in Indiana. His family is quite well off financially. Mine isn't as much. He's 28 and I'm 21. 
I'm terrified that his parents will look down on me for these differences. I'm excited to meet them, but am worried that they won't approve of me or make comments that I won't be prepared for. Could you offer any advice for when I do meet them? Thanks a million, Taylor. So it seems like she has never gotten any of this firsthand, right? Like she's, I guess it's coming from First her boyfriend. First time meeting. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound like, yeah, that she's just getting these impressions from her boyfriend about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, I can only say. Yeah. Right. Or just, you know, maybe they've been on phone calls or something. Yeah. But beyond that, it's the first time they're meeting, so yeah. Have you guys all met your significant other's parents? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, family has always been like something that, yeah, I've given a lot of advice like this to yeah. like fellow friends and like mm. myself and all this stuff. It's hard because you're an adult. Yeah. But they, you know, like, they'll treat you like you're a child. Mm -hmm. And so like, if he's being toxic, you know, it's directed to the boyfriend and things like that, you know, it's like him finding out how to transition into saying like, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't sound like they would take kindly to it. You know, yeah. so you, you have to yeah. be like so delicate. Like yeah. that older generation is, a, <laughs> they're toughies. <laughs> Especially like yeah. if it's something that is a pretty serious relationship, but it sounds like it is. Yeah. That could be terrifying because it's possible these people could become your family. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be around people or be associated with people who aren't going to accept you and that you feel like you're constantly trying to fight for mm -hmm. to get to yeah. like you. Mm -hmm. um, so part of me, it just is like, I would say confront them almost. Like maybe the but first time. Hard, Cause you like burn, you'll burn bridges yeah. and then they, ha then they have this thing like, uh, like this against the whole you. Yeah. I would say like approach with caution, but yeah. know that you're, you're right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go I mean, watch like, uh, Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. bank that energy up in your mind. It could, yeah, it could definitely be worse. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's, um, I think the key to me was the um, note about being worried that they'll make a comment that you're not prepared for. Mm. Yeah. Um, because I think you're both right. I think the best thing you can do is go into that, having the context of knowing the kind of relationship that these people may have with their son. Um, and that ultimately, yeah, you can't necessarily handle that or change that for them. Yeah. Instantly at least. Instantly, exactly, over yeah. time maybe. But you know, all you can do is be present and be yourself. And yeah. I think it's, it's the, the key thing is whether it's not, it may, may not be so much like, you know, confronting, but being confident to stand up for mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. You can yeah. definitely stand up for yourself and make sure that you are not being, being combative, right? It doesn't have to be combative. And I think the idea that, you know, that they may, um, look down on you or see these differences between you and view that as a way that, you know, they can make passing comments that will degrade you or make you feel bad. First of all, um, I think a key thing is knowing your worth mm -hmm. and knowing that those differences between you and your boyfriend don't mean anything really he loves you for who you are right. that's the most important and, part and that's what matters if his parents can't see that that's something they will either have to learn over time yeah um or you just have to be able to navigate that um but i think just knowing that they will if they make those comments that a doesn't reflect on you that doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean that there's any truth behind that and yeah. knowing that will give you the confidence to you know either just bear it with dignity and resolve and find ways to kind of passively be like, that's not really the case. I'm, yeah. that's not how it is. Um, but most important thing to me is they will probably say or do things that will make you unhappy or uncomfortable and just don't internalize it. And also don't let yourself be made to feel like unworthy or inferior yeah. because the, the key thing is your boyfriend doesn't feel that way. Yeah. So the opinions of those people shouldn't make you doubt that in any way, you know? Mm -hmm. But I would say like to watch out like red flag is mm -hmm. it, like make sure like your boyfriend is standing up for you. Yes. Right. yes. If if his dad starts making comments at you mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, okay, you know, like right. that's a red flag to like address immediately with him. Yes. Yeah. You know, cause it's like something he probably doesn't know Just he's do doing. Kick under the table. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like I tend to do the thing where it's like if somebody makes like a joke that like I find like offensive or something, mm -hmm. I'll like just be like, <laughs> you know, and, like yeah. not say anything, but like I've gotten mm -hmm. to the point where I'll be like, well, that's not really that funny, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's so hard because you yeah. just want to be like, ha ha. Because right. you don't okay. want to yes. have to confront yeah. people. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes yeah, it's uncomfortable, they deserve but to be. Yeah. sometimes you have and to. I, I think it's important to know and remember like, if you're with someone, like, their parents probably just want the best for them, and they're very probably defensive and like protective of their kid. Mm. And so if they try grilling you or doing any of that stuff, um, don't take it to heart. They're just like wanting the best mm. for their child. And I think going into it, maybe having a discussion with your boyfriend, yeah. just like, yeah. hey, like I'm nervous about going into this. I just want to make sure you're gonna have my back, mm -hmm. and like, 
you know, be there for me if you see I'm in a tough situation because you don't want to rock the boat, especially the first time meeting them, and be like, in, as I you said, have to all, be, all your life like to rock the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say like, if you if you're in it for the long haul and like yeah. you end up being together for a long time and like they become closer with you and and whatnot, mm -hmm. then you could maybe be more comfortable to be more vocal about your yeah. disdain for things that they're saying to you. But yeah, I think at, at first just. Try to be collected as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. Even if they're wrong, like, I'm sure they are wrong. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, mm -mm. you don't pick your family. And like, yeah. that's, yeah. You tell your boyfriend that. Be like, listen, it doesn't reflect on you if like your, your dad's like an ass, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. you don't pick your family. Sometimes yeah. you just have to put up with it for a short amount of time. Yeah. Like, I know going into this, they're gonna say some stuff that I might not agree with or whatever, but you know, this is their opinion and I'm gonna go in and mm -hmm. try to be as nice as possible. And, and then if they're still bad, <laughs> And then that's their fault. Right. <laughs> but also, like, usually with family, you only have to put up with them for a couple hours at a time mm -hmm. here and there. It's yeah. not. Mm -hmm. It depends. It depends the level of toxicity, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it really depends. What do you yeah. think, Merle? Oh, man, that shit's tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you guys all said what what was right, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, having a conversation with the boyfriend, especially yeah. before, just be like, I'm going to be here for you, you're going to be here for me, let's make sure like we have each other's yeah. back. Yeah, if yeah. you're aware, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Taylor also mentions that, uh, she says, I'm terrified his parents will look down on me for these differences. Mm -hmm. They, You might also be anxious and trying to guess the scenario and the outcome of it, mm -hmm. what's going to happen just based off what you know about them so far. Yeah. You could be pleasantly surprised. They yeah. could be lovely people, they could be very accommodating and, um, you know, if they know that their son loves you and wants to be with you, then maybe they're the kind of people who are just like, good luck. Yeah. We'll support yeah. them. Good luck. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, and I think I think part of it too is like rely, like we were saying, rely on your boyfriend for intel, for like, you know, it, I think it's a thing of, if he knows that they really like something, you know, they're gluten-free and they really like gluten-free cookies or whatever. Um, this may be dumb, but like, yeah, maybe ask if they would appreciate you bringing something. Yeah. Like if you show up with, Hi, I made some like easy points. A piece yeah, I made I, a piece. <laughs> oh my off god! Me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> gluten free cookies. Of just being like, here's this thing that I know that they like, or you know, ask him about things that you know that they are interested in. Things that will be easy points of conversation, just so you have things in your back pocket. Yeah. That absolutely. if you if the conversation does yeah if the conversation does get mm -hmm. uncomfortable or you you snag on something you're like I don't want to talk about this because I don't agree with their with what they're saying and I need to talk about something else. If you know things that they're interested in or things that have been going on. Like if you ask him, like, did they go on any trips recently or, you know, having just a pulse on what they have going on that you can quickly pull from and go, yeah. I'm uncomfortable. I want to ask about your trip to Wyoming last yeah, change month. Change subject. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, to be able to just have, I think for me at least, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a very anxious person. And so I, I tend to perhaps over prepare, but I think mm -hmm. for me, I always feel better going into situations where I know I'm gonna feel uncomfortable or I feel out of my depth or I feel like I'm not necessarily prepared by just giving myself some resources and tools that I know I can fall back Absolutely, on, yeah. that I can feel more confident if I know that I'm approaching people who might be antagonistic towards me, knowing things that I can meet with like sympathy or empathy to be like, cool, you aren't you don't you aren't being nice to me. I'm here are some things that I'm gonna be nice to you and it's gonna be really hard for you to <laughs> be hard. a dick to me. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat these cookies and tell me you don't like me. Yeah. You know, I think if you have things that you that make you feel confident, um, by talking to your boyfriend about, mm -hmm. you know, some things you might learn you might know already or things you might learn about his family. Um, just to have that as like a confidence boost in the back of your mind yeah. that you could rely on that if you get there and you're anxious or nervous, you can turn to him and be like they went on that trip. How was that trip you mentioned? You know, yeah. and, and it also shows that you guys talk about them, and <laughs> people's <laughs> egos are are boosted by that. You yeah. know, they're like, oh, you know, she, our son, and Took this, the time they to... they talk about us. That's yeah. right. That's nice. You know, I think having that kind of stuff helps. But really, at the end of the day, like you guys said, I think you it's really hard to do but you can't put your worth in the hands of other people absolutely yeah. and you can't control it like you're saying like you're not gonna be able to control these people's opinion of you and just making yourself comfortable with that you don't have to necessarily be at peace with it but just knowing that that's out of your hands and all you can do is be yourself and be with the person you love yes. and, and I think open. that's an important note yeah. too is be yourself because I think yeah. a lot of people when they're meeting the parents for the first time tend to put on this persona Mm -hmm. And like this, like I'm gonna be this perfect thing of <laughs> what they want. I'm gonna agree with everything they say uh -huh. and like try to make them laugh and smile. It's like if he's their kid and he loves you, there's probably something about you that his family would connect with as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just being yourself as much as possible because life's too short not to be yourself. 
Uh, and then you also set these expectations or this like image of yourself that's not right and then you have to keep mm -hmm. up with them all the time now. If you just go in there and you're yourself, whether they accept you or not, that's out of your hands as you guys mm -hmm. said. So the bet that's the best thing you could do, I think. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good luck. <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah. We actually don't get a lot of questions about meeting parents. Yeah. It's surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we'll Important thing. Now. Yes. Yeah. Well, good luck, Taylor. We love you. Um, and we could be your parents. We think yeah. you're great. I'll be your dad. <laughs> You're all dead. I'll be your weird aunt. We'll also be your yeah. aunts. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm your dad. I want to make that <laughs> very clear. We're making that very clear. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, um, if you want to write into the show, you could email us alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com if you have a question for our box of issues, a shot suggestion, questions for the show, anything you want, even just a, a note of appreciation for us. We always love those. <laughs> yeah. Send us your love, please. We need it. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, GB. Yay. Thank you so much for having us. Yay. Um, we're going to be doing a post show with you as well. We're, we're actually going to be trying out some ASMR stuff that yeah. we're very excited about. We have a special microphone and everything we're going to we're going to use as well. So uh, if you're not a first member, sign up for a free trial and you could come check it out. Uh, it's going to be very fun and very uh, unique for us. <laughs> very tingly. Very tingly. I'm, you guys are naturals. I can already tell. Because <laughs> <laughs> we watch. Yay! It. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank yeah. you for joining me, and thank you so much Hope for watching. Be here. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers my coffee. Yeah, coffee. Ding 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 Thank you so much for watching that episode of Always Open. Uh, if you liked it, give it a like. Also, make sure you click that bell because we want you to watch our other YouTube videos and we want you to know about it. So do it or else I'll find you.